If you're concerned about hair loss, then you've very likely heard of and maybe even tried finasteride, more widely known as Propecia. But did you know that there is a less well-known drug called Dutasteride that has a mechanism of action that is very similar to finasteride and is even approved as a hair loss medication in some countries? We'll tell you all about Dutasteride and what it can do for your hair in today's video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. This is going to be an extremely in-depth guide on Dutasteride and how to maximize its results. I've put timestamps for you in the description and the comment section so you can refer back to any points at any time. And if you're really considering taking Dutasteride for hair loss, then I advise that you watch the whole video so you can make a well-informed decision on whether or not to do it. Now just before we get into the video, make sure to hit subscribe and make sure to click the link in the description to take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz where you'll receive free, expert and personalised advice on how to regrow healthy hair. And guys, as always, let me know in the comments below on your thoughts on Dutasteride. Now without any further ado, let's get into it. First, what is Dutasteride? So Dutasteride is an oral medication that is sold under the brand name Avodot by the drug company GlaxoSmithKline. It was originally developed and is currently approved in the US and Europe for the treatment of a condition known as benign prostatic hyperlasia. This is when the prostate enlarges due to things that are not actually related to cancer. Prostate enlargement is a very common condition with old age. It's estimated to affect close to half of men who are 50 years old and over 90% of men by the time they reach 80. It's not life-threatening in and of itself, but has many unpleasant symptoms that can lower the quality of one's life. These include things like increased frequency of urination and difficulty starting or completing urination. There's also some other less common symptoms like urinary tract infections or blood in the urine. Now, the molecules in the male body directly implicated in causing the prostate to enlarge is dihydrotestosterone or DHT. DHT is one of the four male hormones that make up the androgen family and it is the strongest of the four. DHT has a potency in the male body three times that of testosterone. So when a male starts out his life as a fetus in the womb, he needs DHT to develop the male sex organs. Without DHT, the male reproductive organs will actually not develop, so this is obviously a very crucial hormone. Shortly after birth, the production of DHT drops to undetectable levels. Now, that being said, during puberty, DHT is once again critical for the development of the so-called secondary sex characteristics like the bodily hair on the chest and other parts of the body including things like the deepening of the voice as well as musculoskeletal changes and more. It's after puberty that DHT, well, apparently stops doing anything useful and then it starts to create problems. And the two main problems that it causes are A, the enlargement of the prostate and B, male pattern baldness. So it is no coincidence that finasteride, the first drug that was developed specifically to block DHD, is approved by the FDA for the treatment of both prostate enlargement as well as hair loss. Dutasteride, on the other hand, is currently FDA approved only for prostate enlargement, but it also works for hair loss, which we'll come to shortly. So how do these drugs exactly block the action of DHD? Well, DHT is converted from testosterone via the action of two different enzymes. These two enzymes are different in molecular structure, but they are identical in function, and they are called 5-alpha reductase type 1 and 5-alpha reductase type 2. Without at least one of these enzymes, our body cannot create DHT. And by the way, I should mention, in case you don't know what an enzyme is, that it's simply the name that we give to a protein that acts as a catalyst for a chemical reaction. There are many thousands of different kinds of proteins within the human body, but only some of them are enzymes. Now guys, going back to DHT and its enzymes, the difference between the two drugs is that finasteride blocks the action of the type 2 enzyme only. However, dutasteride blocks both the type 1 enzymes and the type 2 enzymes. So, whereas with finasteride, you get a reduction of DHT in the blood by around 70%, but with dutasteride, this is over 90%. And this reduction happens fast. Just after one week of daily dosing, DHT levels drop by 85% and hit the 90% plateau reduction after two weeks. This reduction 
is maintained indefinitely for as long as the drug is taken. So, as with finasteride, your body doesn't actually develop a resistance to dutasteride. Now, on the face of it, this might seem very promising. Less DHT in the body should mean less hair loss, right? Well, not so fast. The problem is that male hair loss is caused by DHT synthesized specifically through the type 2 enzyme and not the type 1 enzyme. We know this because men who have a very specific genetic mutation that inhibits the expression of the type 2 enzyme only don't go bold, even though they still have the normal type 1 enzyme. And these men also don't develop prostate enlargement. So the question is, how is it possible that only the type 2 enzyme is implicated in hair loss? After all, both enzymes create the exact same molecule, DHT, right? Well, that is true, but what you have to realize is that the two enzymes are found in different parts of the human body. In the prostate and hair follicles, you will find mostly the type 2 enzyme, whereas type 1 enzyme is found primarily in areas like the liver, the skin, and the testicles, though it is also found in the scalp. Now guys, we're going to look at the mode of action of dutasteride. So, dutasteride blocks the action of both 5-alpha reductase enzymes, but how exactly does it do that? Well, dutasteride binds to either of the two 5-alpha reductase enzymes and forms one large drug enzyme complex. This molecule is very stable over time, and it serves to trap the 5-alpha reductase molecules in it. When they're bound up, to dutasteride, the enzymes cannot convert testosterone to DHT, and the production of DHT in the body drops dramatically. What are the results of dutasteride like? So, we know from published research that dutasteride is about as equally effective as finasteride in the treatment of the symptoms of prostate enlargement. But how does it stack up when it comes to male pattern baldness? Well, due to its ability to inhibit both 5-alpha reductase enzymes, Dutasteride is certainly the most chemically powerful of the two. As we mentioned, whereas finasteride results in an approximately 70% reduction in blood DHT levels, the reduction from dutasteride is in excess of 90%. Dutasteride also appears to be slightly more effective in lowering scalp DHT levels, around 41% versus a 34% reduction with finasteride. But guys, what about actual hair growth? Does dutasteride's extra strength translate into more hairs on the scalp? Now, in the medical literature, one of the best ways to answer questions like this about the relative efficacy of one drug versus another, or of one drug versus placebo, is what is called a meta-analysis. In meta-analysis, you take all the relevant individual studies and then you add them up into one large study. And because you're aggregating all the individual data points in this way, you end up with a much larger sample size and can therefore be much more confident of the result. And conveniently for us, a meta-analysis comparing the efficacy of dutasteride versus finasteride for male pattern hair loss was published just last year in the journal Clinical Interventions in Aging. Now, we have linked to this study as well as other scientific literature that we've consulted while making this video in the description below that you can check out in your own time. So, the authors of this mate of analysis found three randomized double blind trials that directly compared the effects of dutasteride to finasteride. Across the three studies, a total of 290 patients were treated with dutasteride and 286 patients with finasteride. The efficacy parameters evaluated in the mate of analysis were A, change in hair count, B, investigator assessments of the before and after photographs. C. Assessments of the photograph by a panel of experts, as well as D. The subject's own assessment of the treatment efficacy. The results of the meta analysis showed that dutasteride was statistically superior to finasteride in all of its respects. With regards to sexual side effects, which we will come to in more detail shortly, the meta analysis found no statistically significant difference in their frequency between the two treatments. How does dutasteride work for finasteride-resistant patients? So, dutasteride can be the first choice of treatment for pattern baldness, but another area for use is for men who have already tried finasteride with no success. And actually, between 30 to 50% of finasteride users will experience no benefits from the drug, so we're actually talking about a very large pool of potential users. Well, a 2014 study out of South Korea, where dutasteride is licensed for male pattern baldness, actually sought to answer precisely this question. 
The researchers enrolled a total of 35 men with mild to moderate boldness. The men had all been unsuccessfully treated with the standard finasteride dosage of 1 mg daily for at least 6 months in the past. 31 of the 35 patients who entered the study completed the 6 month dutasteride treatment at the standard dose of 0.5 mg daily. Out of these 31 patients, 24 showed some degree of hair improvement based on photographic assessment, while the remaining 7 patients actually showed no change. But none of the men's hair situation deteriorated whilst on dutasteride. So the results of this study support the idea that dutasteride can give some benefit to those men who got nothing from finasteride. Next guys, let's check out combination therapy. Dutasteride plus finasteride. Ok guys, so we've seen how dutasteride compares to finasteride head on, as well as what it can do as a second line treatment for those resistant to finasteride. But what about actually combining dutasteride and finasteride in the same treatment regimen? Now this is very uncharted territory and definitely not something that we would be recommending, but it has been done and the results were published as a case study out of Australia in 2013. The patient was a 47 year old who had started to bowl over the vertex and was put on 1 mg of finasteride daily. After 6 months, the man had a pretty good response and so his doctors kept him on finasteride. But after 4 years on the drug, the treatment efficacy started to decline and the pattern hair loss resumed. So rather than switching from finasteride to dutasteride, his treating doctors took the unusual step of adding dutasteride to the finasteride, though at a very low dosage of just 0.5mg per week. To appreciate how low this dose is, bear in mind that the standard dutasteride dosage is 0.5mg daily, so this is exactly 7 times less than the standard dosage. Now the most obvious reason that such a low dosage was chosen is that combining the two drugs in such a way could potentially dramatically increase the risk of side effects. If you watched our previous video on micro dosing finasteride, then you might recall that this is also the case with finasteride. You get a lot of bang for your buck out of finasteride by taking only a fraction of the recommended dosage, and you have to amp up the dosage dramatically to max out the benefits. So going back to our case study, what were the results? Well actually the combination treatment definitely did the trick. In these before and afters, you can see what the man's crown looked like after 4 years on finasteride, and on the right the results after the addition of the low dose of dutasteride. The improvement is definitely notable. The doctors reported no adverse side effects from this combination treatment. So now we've seen what dutasteride can do for your hair, what are the possible side effects? As we already mentioned, dutasteride side effects are more or less identical to what you get with finasteride and at more or less the same frequency. The more common ones are impotence, a decrease in sex drive, ejaculation problems and gynecomastia. The drug has also been found to reduce sperm count, the volume of semen produced as well as the mobility of the sperm cells. These reductions are mild but they will affect most users of the drug. Aside from these reproductive side effects, some men also experience depression, though it can be sometimes difficult to tell whether the depression was caused directly from the drug or from other various problems. But the big disadvantage of dutasteride compared to finasteride, at least on paper, is its longer half-life. Whereas the half-life of finasteride is 6-8 to eight hours, dutasteride is actually 5 weeks. This means that dutasteride will stick around in your system for far longer after discontinuation of the drug, and that means any unwanted side effects might be more difficult to reverse. Now for whatever reason, GlaxoSmithKline did not pursue marketing dutasteride for male pattern baldness in the US. It does not have FDA approval for this medication. Reportedly, there were some phase 3 trials underway, but these were shelved again for reasons that were not actually clear. The drug has however been licensed for male pattern baldness in Japan and South Korea, where it recently ousted finasteride as a market share leader for the first time. Even though dutasteride is not licensed for hair loss in the United States, this doesn't stop many doctors from prescribing it at their discretion, so called off label. Perhaps the most famous celebrity to come out and say dutasteride was being used for his hair loss was Ashton Kutcher. 
the Hollywood star recently went on record saying that he started losing his hair when he was in his mid-twenties and his doctor put him on the drug for over a decade. The dutasteride stabilised his hair loss, but when he decided to have children a few years ago, he stopped taking the drug and the hair loss resumed. Now, we should mention that while dutasteride is by no means a drug that is free of side effects, Ashton did not necessarily have to come off it when he decided to become a father. You see, while dutasteride would cause severe problems in children's development if taken by a pregnant woman, on the other hand, the amount of drug present in the semen of men who take it is minuscule, so his partner will simply not be exposed to sufficient quantities to cause any problems. Now, having said that, if a couple is struggling to conceive while the man is on dutasteride, then obviously coming off the drug is the logical thing to do, as the reductions in sperm count and volume could actually lead to a slight less chance of fertility. So where can you find dutasteride? So if you do want to use dutasteride for hair loss, the good news is that the drug's patent has expired, meaning that you can now find generic versions at a much lower price than Avodart. But dutasteride is prescription only, so you will need a doctor's prescription to get it. As we mentioned, the doctor will need to prescribe the drug off-label, but off-label prescribing is not illegal, so you shouldn't particularly struggle to find a doctor who is willing to prescribe it. The recommended dosage for hair loss is 0.5 milligrams daily, and treatment will have to last indefinitely. As soon as the drug is discontinued, any hair that is grown back will be lost, and the underlying pattern baldness will resume its course. So we've gone over various aspects of dutasteride in today's video, and now it's time for our verdict. Is it thumbs up? Or is it thumbs down? Well guys, it's all relative. It really depends on how far you want to zoom the lens out before passing judgement. So for starters, dutasteride is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So when you're evaluating it, you want to be comparing it to finasteride, which is the other drug in this category. So how does dutasteride stack up against finasteride? Well, the answer is, I have to tell you, is not so bad. The results of the research that we've covered today show a slight but more or less consistent advantage in terms of efficacy. At the same time, you basically get the same side effects and of more or less similar frequency. So if you were comparing dutasteride to finasteride only, it certainly doesn't appear to be inferior in any meaningful way. And also, if you're getting absolutely no results with finasteride, there is always a possibility that you could get some benefit out of dutasteride. Having said that, the side effects are of a sexual nature, and if you do get them, they will probably be very, very distressing, just like with finasteride. So that's definitely something that you should bear in mind, and will no doubt be a deal breaker for many men out there. And there will be many men out there, and especially amongst the regular viewers of our channel, who will simply not be interested in ingesting a very powerful drug. Now, the good news is, is that there are many natural treatments to stopping hair loss. Since these treatments involve naturally occurring compounds, they can't be patented, so no pharmaceutical company is going to invest the millions of dollars necessary to conduct the clinical trials for FDA approval. And guys, if you click the videos on the screen now, you can learn more about microdosing finasteride and the truth about male pattern boldness. This is Leon from HairGuard.com.